welcome 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 to another day of decoding decoding domains uh, today we are decoding the domain competitive programming we have with us nishta gupta yo nishta hi people she is the women in tech lead you guys know her already uh, we had uh, gone through it through the information session so yep let us start this is me this handsome young boy in this photo is me that's the lead uh, and, and this is nishta nishta do you want to introduce yourself again yeah well in short i am the revenant tech lead of scri it and i'm well also the competitive programming domain head for this year in gdscri it so well that that would work i guess <laughs> yep so what is competitive programming uh as the gif says its mind is equals to blown when you talk about competitive <laughs> programming because it's a mind sport uh it is uh, it is yes. a mind sport because you solve logical problems using programming and the constraint is that you have to take into consideration the time uh, time it takes the space it takes and other uh, other uh, i would say constraints that are possible and that's how you have to uh, like always search for turnarounds and uh, that is how it's a sport because you'll have to train your mind to come up with logical solutions to every problem that you uh, come across and uh, to write efficient code is what is uh, is what the role of a sport programmer is so yup if you are the office fans uh, please comment box me dalo wo cheez ki yup <clears throat> anyway why should i do competitive programming okay so the um, why you should do because um, it becomes like you 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 develop a problem solving and a fast thinking approach and uh, you learn how to write efficient code optimize your code like uh, you you get to you get to minimize your uh, lines of codes and also how uh, how it interprets like you get to know about the all the underlying concepts that, that are to programming then uh, you you like you debug your code very quickly because you have to do that like even even when you go through an algorithm them you you can easily uh, identify what time complexity it is what space complexity it is like space complexity are two terms that would be explained further don't worry about it um yep you get uh, you get famous you get stars on uh, on websites like code chef and uh, hacker rank or geeks for geeks you get really famous uh, and yep it boosts your confidence and yeah uh, it is a good thing to have it uh, in your resume but not the only thing that uh, your resume can have so many people misinterpret as that like, if you if you are good at competitive programming then only you can uh, land a job but that's not true this is a way to land a job like if you if you want to get a software engineer role at a very good company uh, you 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 have to do competitive programming that way like uh, for, like there are various software engineers roles but this is the primitive way like uh, like how it has been uh, but now it has changed a lot and uh, this is a perfect stage to go to the next slide and uh, ask nishtha to tell the people like why not why not to do competitive program <clears throat> well uh, so yeah why should i not do competitive programming so again competitive programming is a sport right so if you are not interested in it and you are just doing for the sake of getting a job you should not do competitive programming because it it is something that you should be interested in and you should you know have that uh, andar se wala thing that i want to do this and you know it it just brings me joy or it it's just something i'm interested in like a lot so that's when you should do competitive programming otherwise just to get your resume shortlisted it's definitely a nice to have but it's not mandatory you should only stick to the basic dsa concept dsa is data structures and algorithms so yeah so if you stick with basic dsa uh, concepts uh, you still would be able to crack the interviews so yeah exactly dsa and the cp are two different things that uh, at this point we should uh, point it out that these are two different things and uh, uh, just knowing dsa doesn't mean that you are a competitive programmer you have to do practice you have to participate in challenges you have to uh, like be a competitive programmer to be called one so that's about it and uh, how do i start so Yeah, Nishta, you should tell me. I think you would be the best one to uh, answer this. <laughs> sure thing. So well, now as it's written, now we're talking. The main thing: how do I start competitive programming? So first, again, DSA concepts, data structures, and algorithms. Again, it's those are very necessary. So like, 
that should be the first thing you should pick up like bef- like before obviously before that you should know a programming language you can pick any programming language uh, there is no you know bound that you should pick this particular language you can pick any programming language cp only requires your logic building so it doesn't matter which programming language you choose uh, so yeah first pick a programming language learn it uh, and then learn the basic concepts like the basic dsa concepts and then you should slowly and gradually apply those concepts in different easy level questions and then move to you know uh, hard questions yeah so that's basically kind of the road map but not not actually a road map because uh, there is no such road map as nisha said that the programming language doesn't matter but it can matter when it comes to run time and uh, other stuff so but as a beginner you don't have to worry about it but as you gradually increase your level you'll have to uh, switch to uh, programming languages that are close to the machine code that machine can understand very easily and you can have your uh, uh, time of execution shortened so that is how it works and uh, it 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 differs from person to person how he approaches this uh, like this domain and not just computer programming it it always it always depends on the uh, domain and the person who is approaching it so there is no road map and uh, you you should listen to others but apply your own uh, your own uh, i would say insight and uh, try to figure out a way to do your thing and find the niche so yeah and uh, as the meme says tere paas koi aur rasta hai there is always a way and you have to figure it out on your own exactly. yes because you will get multiple different such road maps from different people so yeah you should not stick to any of those just pave your own path yeah but while paving that path you have to keep these things in your brain in your mind that get your basics cleared first because uh, every question you solve you get across a different kind of data structure or a different kind of uh, i would say algorithm that you have to work on so yeah g- get your basics cleared like what what can be the basics here the basics can be as i said the data structures that are arrays the linked lists or or uh, the trees anything uh, that is a basic thing that you should know so you should actually first get uh, ahead of that then grit and perseverance because it takes a lot of patience to uh, debug your code uh, run all the test cases and uh, oh, no. yeah uh, <laughs> yes yeah, so as i have inserted the image here that you your your 203 test cases run but mm-hmm. on the 212th test case the answer is wrong that is very frustrating so it takes a lot oh, of perseverance to yep Uh, it takes patience it takes hard work and a damn lot of practice now this damn lot of practice takes care of all the things that we mentioned that uh, it takes perseverance patience hard work and blah 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 but if you practice it regularly it would come very naturally to you it will come very easily to you so the only uh, way to succeed at competitive programming is practice so if you do that you won't struggle as much and uh, yeah without struggle there is no success so that's how competitive programming is uh moving on it is uh, what it is is what should be tra- in, inserted there but yeah. <laughs> then uh, moving yeah. on to most popular competitive programming contests well you might have heard about many of these so but according to me like these are the main uh, competitive programming contests on like a global level which includes the google hashcode hashcode is again an annual competition but it's a team level competition so you cannot individually participate like actually you can but it's better to have you know just participate in a team it's fun that way so yeah again if we are on the hash code topic well i participated in the hash code this year and uh, we were ranked like my team of two were ranked uh, 6355 it's not something very 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 good on a global level but it's something that we are just proud of well it was our first attempt and we landed that so yeah <laughs> then uh, the code jam code jam is again an annual competition google competition uh, competitive programming contest and it's an individual level competition so you need to participate in it individually you cannot participate in a team then comes the google kickstarts the there are eight rounds in google gets kickstarts in a particular year so you can give it once a year or you can give it eight times a year that doesn't matter you can you know just get your hand dirty with it it gives you a lot of practice and it's it's a very 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 good uh, uh just uh, podium to you know showcase your cp skills 
so yeah so kick starts and there i guess is going to happen this in this month and then in november again to last two rounds are remaining then comes the acm icpc that is the most renowned uh team competition like a uh, competitive programming contest and it's again it's only for uh, college students so yeah that's like a bound there but you can participate in a team of 2 2 i suppose yeah so yeah go ahead and participate for our icpc next year this year i guess it's already over uh, only the final round is remaining then recently we had like the facebook hacker cup it's again an individual level cp comp- contest competition yeah so that is also a good way to showcase your cp skills the questions are good in hacker cup uh, so yeah you should you know have a good practice before giving hacker cup at least i would suggest to get like a good uh, rank in that yeah and then again there are many different contests on many different platforms the most uh, like you know good level uh, competitions i would say like tough questions in which like the tough questions could be asked at code chef code courses and at coder even on hacker earth you will have like different competitions but yeah so these are the ones in which uh, you'll have like a uh, good you'll get different good level of questions and you can get your hands dirty again in the in those questions for that one yeah. yeah so basically i would say that uh, the first question that uh, arises in in anyone's mind is that when do we get ready to actually participate in these things like when should we start and i think there is no right answer to it because uh, the right answer always is that now you have to start now even if you don't know exactly. anything you should you should attempt these questions you should attempt these competitions you should just start participating because you would never feel that you are ready because competitive programming is a very wide spread and a very wide domain where you can explore as much as you can and still feel that you are not ready so just start exactly. participating as nishta said about uh, hash code even i had participated but i wouldn't share my rank here so uh, anyway <laughs> that is how that is how it works like you have to participate you 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 might fail you might come uh, like a very a very behind in the rank or something but it is important that you participate so start participating participating in these things and don't worry about the results it always enhances your skills it yeah it it uh, and it also gives the uh, opportunity to flex like just uh, like how nishta did a few moments <laughs> earlier so yeah start participating yes. yeah and uh, we come to the most important part that uh, a burnout as i said like that you have to practice a lot you have to uh, do a lot of coding to get your uh, like to get your hands on for competitive programming but um you don't have to overdo it you can take a break you should take a break and uh, that is what like is missing nowadays like when people say about competitive programming they are like oh i code for it as a day i do this i do that which is a very good thing but not on the uh, cost of your mental health not not uh, with a burnout so yep uh, it it is sometimes uh, good to stay in your bed on a monday and then start debugging your code after that dan salmon says a very uh, a very legit good thing that it it is not uh, the hustle culture is not what it takes to be a good programmer you you can exactly. take a break you should take a break and take care of your uh, mental peace too um so now to the <laughs> yep uh this is an absolute win when you recompile your code 74 mm. time and you get a different error so <clears throat> yeah not so motivating but still motivating <laughs> and it is very it is very motivating to get a different error oh my god so as i said uh, not to disrupt uh, mental peace we'll start with a question <laughs> <laughs> sure sure that sounds good okay so now getting serious so this question is something which actually kind of covers everything main parts of cp so basically i'll read out the question and then i'll explain the question again uh okay so given an array a with n elements arranged in ascending order and also given a number k if there exists two indices such that the sum of elements at those indices is equal to k like if yes then print those indices accordingly else print no answer so uh then there is again a note that note says if there are multiple such pairs of i and j print maximum j value pair and if all j's are equal 
print minimum i value pair. Okay. So basically, what the question first mentions, first let's list out the things which are already given in the question. What is given? An ascending, uh, as like ascending ordered arranged array A with how many number of elements? N. Right. And then there is a another given number K, which will just be like a sum. A particular sum would be given, like a particular number K, and then you'll basically need to traverse through each element of the array and then you need to find two such pairs in which which when the combined like when summed up should give the sum as the given number k and then if that's true then you need to print the ij value that is ij value is the indices of those particular values which were summed up from the array and if no then just print no answer that's about it. And then the note, basically, I'll get back to the note later. So, yeah. So, yeah. let's start. Basically, with the, the question uh, the question is about uh, how you would uh, go through and uh, see the summation of the elements because they have already made it easy for you by arranging them in ascending order. Now, sorting is not your headache because they have already given you a sorted array. So, that is a good thing that uh, we can use many approaches because it is already sorted. Otherwise, it would have been a headache like how to sort the array first and then search mm -hmm. for the element. So, that would have increased your uh, work there. So, a lucky thing that we have been given already a sorted array and uh, yeah we'll also uh, come to the note and the question like we'll use a whiteboard in in just a minute but uh, let's first go through the approaches and uh, then we will do that um, so first approach uh, brute force algorithm as we call it uh, or the naive approach it is uh, it is called brute force and the, basically the brute force or naive algorithm is like you try, try out all the test cases like you uh, go through everything uh, and uh, then you find out the correct answer so for here it would be key uh, you take one element and compare it with all the elements present so for that you would need two for loops which has written here that you would need two for loops and how would these two for loops work now uh, let's not get into the coding part because uh, we are trying to like just uh, explain the logic and how the algorithm would work and how we are trying to uh, how we'll try to minimize the uh, I would say the runtime and the time complexity one by one. So the first approach that you or anyone would think of is that okay like let's take one element let's compare it to every other element and then we'll get the answer and uh, that would take the time complexity as order of n square and how I'll tell you that. So uh, you are taking one element. Uh, so the first for loop the outer for loop would select one element that is your uh, uh, let's say we'll start with obviously the zeroth element as the array indexing starts from zero so we start from the zeroth element and then another for loop inside the first for loop that is the nested for loop that would check uh, that would compare uh, the uh, element with the first one and now what is the comparison here the comparison is that uh, you are you are given the k uh, the sum that uh, the summation should be equal to k so your first outer loop which is the for loop it is on ith index and the element at ith index should have been uh, differenced from like should have been subtracted from the uh, uh, k sum so we subtract it from the k sum and then we look for the uh, the difference that we have for the, in uh, in the other elements so that's how it will work and um, okay let me just uh, share uh, the whiteboard i'll do that hmm. so yep we have the question as uh, we have given an array a and uh, let's assume the array to be uh, let's say two, three, five. As we have already given that uh, the array uh, is in ascending order, so I am already ar arranging them in the ascending order. The array could have been anything else also, but let's just take an example that we have the uh, we have these five elements and they are arranged already in ascending orders. I am talking about two for loops here and how would the two for loops work? Uh, let's say this is the for loop for i i okay and we have the conditions here that if i is greater than zero i plus plus and uh, then inside this for loop we have another for loop uh, my handwriting is really gross but bear with me and <laughs> just focus on the concept so 
yeah the these are two for loops this i would start from uh, zeroth index and uh, j would start from one so how would that work you are uh, you are your i is here right now for the first iteration then and the, uh, when when it goes inside like uh, when the condition gets satisfied it goes inside and uh, j starts from here it would compare okay so let's take k to be 7 now it would check that is uh, is 2 and 3 2 plus 3 equal to 7 no then j would move on to 5 then it would check like is 2 and 5 equal to 7 it gets the correct answer but now understand this like if if you don't if you don't get the answer with i you just go and also check with other elements so you have two nested for loops and usually two nested for loops now uh, focus on the words usually two nested for loops always give you the uh, uh, time complexity as order of n square because you are taking one element and comparing it with all the rest uh, other elements at the n minus one elements and you do this n times where n is actually the number of elements you have in an array so that n into n gives you n square that would be the highest polynomial that you have and uh, whenever we talk about time complexity we are actually uh, considering every iteration to be of one unit time so that's how it works like uh, n times in to n times that would be n square so that is the uh, naive approach that is the brute force uh, algorithm i would say and its time complexity is o order of n square now the uh, approach we have uh, written it down in uh, in the form of an algorithm that you initialize the array you take the loop uh, as i already mentioned you take the size of array minus one because you'll have to st stop before one element because your j would be ahead of your i so that's how it will work you store the index of the element because you have to return the index of the element by the way and not the elements itself uh, and uh, then you store the difference that is k minus array of i uh, array of i here is the element itself this is how you represent uh, array elements and uh, k was the sum here as i said you will have to subtract the element that you are at in i and then uh, search for the difference that is j would search uh, go and search for the difference so this is what it is written and uh, then you stop when you get the summation as k or your i and your j loops get terminated so anyway it will take n square of time so yep next approach is the binary search approach uh, nishta uh, would you like to continue yeah so let's directly jump on to the black like whiteboard is my whiteboard visible like yes yes it is it is visible okay so um let's directly jump on to the example itself uh let's assume the array to be two three four five and let's say six pretty simple right so and then let's take k to be nine okay and then well n is given as five right uh this these are the term things which are given in the question itself okay so now what this up second approach set states is that we'll only use one particular loop so let's say we have a for loop which starts from i and that is zero and it obviously goes till i is less than n and i plus plus okay right wow don't mind me saying such stuff okay anyway <laughs> so uh when we have this single particular loop which will basically traverse through all the given elements in the particular array which is well positioned as zero one two three and four okay i just yep Cool. Okay, so then we'll start with for uh, i is 0. So the element here is 2. Okay, then we'll go with a binary search. First, k, let's take one thing as difference and we'll take that to be k minus the i. i which is the index at like where while we are traversing the particular given array. So then we are saving that in the difference uh, variable. Now we'll use a concept of binary search here. So I hope you all are familiar with binary search. If you're not, I'll explain that too. So basically we'll have to make like a function 
a particular function i'm not getting into the code of the function so i'll just explain the approach of the binary search so what the binary search does is uh it takes like the first element like uh it takes i let's say it takes i and j that is the first element and the last element or any positions from in between which you need to search a particular element and it takes obviously the element let's assume the element to be v x okay so the element is x here now we'll pass on this difference so here uh the i is 2 so i i mean the i is 0 and the j well the j is l minus 1 basically the last element and the x that is the difference so what would the difference be here okay you guys can't see anyway the difference here would be uh, 9 minus 2 which would be 7 now what this binary search will do is it will search for 7 how it will first divide this particular given array which is starting from 0 to n minus 1 in two halves and it will compare it with the uh, middle element let's say this is the array that is 2 i won't write it it's given here 2 3 4 5 6 right so this is the array and we are well starting from 0 to 6 that is 0 to 4 itself so i is 0 and the j is 4 that is n minus 1 so in this the middle element would be 4 here right so we'll compare 4 with 7 now we can see that 4 is less than 7 that is x here the l the thing which we want to search so it's less so that's why we'll change the i here to be the middle element plus one like we'll change the particular position of the array which we are searching so in binary search again we just divide the particular given array into two halves and then search according to the middle element we'll first compare the middle element with the element which we have it at hand that is x which is seven and the middle element is 4. So we'll compare 4 with 7. As we can see that 4 is less than 7. So we'll search the second half. That is, as this array is sorted, so we'll search the second half. That would be 5 and 6. Right. So we'll search this particular array. And here, then again, the same thing would repeat and repeat. So basically, we are dividing a particular array into two halves and then again searching one only one particular side of that array and again repeating the same stuff so this always takes like because we are dividing in, it in two halves so log base 2 and n so that is the time complexity here log of n that is the time complexity of binary search right so it will basically search for this particular difference wala element in that particular array which is which has been passed to the function and it will repeat the same steps right and then we'll also add like a return statement when that is the terminating statement for the function that is when we'll find this particular difference element i'll just remove and if we words. don't find the element that is present then we'll check for the condition where i is uh, greater than j because uh, as nishtha said that uh, i is the uh, i is the index that you'll take on the left hand side of the array and j is the element that will take the right hand side of the array so now if if you imagine it getting halved and the pointers moving if i gets greater than j then there is no point in searching further because you have right. already searched the whole array so that would be another exactly. terminating condition right so that would be like the general terminating condition which would mean that we did not find the particular given uh, x that is difference here we did not find the difference element and so we'll just return minus one that is we did not usually in programming when we don't find or we are not able to search for a particular thing we return minus one and if we do we return the particular thing with whatever is needed so we'll assume it to be minus one that we are not like we did not get what we were searching for and it's not present so we'll return minus one but if we found the particular element then we'll return the index of that particular element right so here like uh let's say that i am just keeping that particular found index like index sorry in uh, like saving that in r so i'll write r and uh let's say that i have named my binary search function as b search so I'll pass this and I'll pass I, I'll pass uh, N minus one because I'll obviously have to uh, traverse through the whole array to search for that element. And I'm only taking I because I won't be needing the elements before I. 
because those are like the elements which are smaller than i that is the main thing in binary search that the array should be sorted okay and if the array is not sorted you can't apply this approach and you can't apply binary search in general so yeah and then we are find, uh, finding the element that is different so we'll just type that and this will return either minus 1 that is when the element is not found when difference is not found we'll uh, uh minus 1 would be returned and if the element is found then that particular element's index would be returned index is 0 1 2 3 4 these are the indexes indices okay so any particular index would be returned so now when we are taking two into consideration we won't be able to find seven so seven would be like minus 1 would be returned and thus uh, there would be again a condition here let's just assume that i and j capital i and capital j are the things which we need to print okay like that is the final thing which we need to print as an answer so we'll start by defining obviously i and j and we'll initialize them to be minus 1 okay because those are the indices which are not present in the array like even if the whole array has been traversed you will never find an index which is minus 1 obviously right because the index starts from zero so uh, we will not be able to find minus 1 that's why we'll initialize it with minus 1 and uh, then we'll say that if first we'll search like if r that is the element which has been uh, returned if r is not minus 1 if r is not equal to minus 1 why because we need the particular index we can't uh, give the value of i and j as minus 1 because it's already minus 1 we don't need that so if r is not equal to minus 1 then uh, we'll like not go through i is equals to r, like capital i is equals to small i which is the index because we need to save that index too we need to return those index indices so that's why i capital i is equals to i and capital j is equals to j would be something which would be included in uh, that particular if statement that if the returned value from binary search is not minus 1 but uh, here we can see that it is minus 1 so we'll not go through these statements and directly we'll increment the value of i uh, like by 1 so the i would be 1 now i is 1 i is 1 that is a uh, capital a of i is the value basically is 3 so now i is 1 the value is 3 so difference would be i'll make a table here right just to make it more clear i'm sorry again a bad and writing difference and here yeah. so we are taking i to be we are assuming i to be first zero so difference there was k that is 9 minus uh, 2 which was 7 but again we did not find any r here so r was minus 1 so nothing happened in capital i and capital j there was no change in capital i and capital j's value but then we'll go with uh, i to be 1 and we'll take now i as i'm sorry just a second sorry 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 yeah so as i uh, here would be 1 so the value of i like the value a of i would be 3 so 9 minus 3 is 6 and here as we can see in the array that is 2 3 4 5 and 6 in the in this array we have an element as 6 so uh, we'll find that and the index here 0 1 2 3 4 index here is 4 so 4 would be returned right from binary search here from binary search 4 would be returned so uh, this condition would be fulfilled that r is not equal to minus 1 so the capital i value would be now 3 sorry 1 not the value the index the capital i's value would be the index small i which would be 1 and the capital j's value would be small r which is 4 right now comes the note okay so uh, do you all remember that the note said that if we have a uh, 
one or more like we if we find more than one pair of i and j which is satisfying the condition like that the sum of those two indices is giving is giving out like is uh, k basically then we need to only uh, print the maximum j value in those two particular pairs like i'll directly tell you that it's visible that three and six sums out to be nine and four and five also sums out to be nine right so in this if condition we will also need to add one more condition that says and and that says uh, i'm using c++ here that's why i'm using and and this the language doesn't matter but anyway so we we'll need to add this particular condition that the capital j value should be uh, i mean sorry the small r value should be greater than or equal to capital j so only then we need to change the value of i j because here when we go like after this particular iteration i the i value would be 2 and that would be 4 right so it will uh, compare 4 and the difference value would be 5 here and we'll find 5 at 3 that is r like a binary search would return the index value of 3 that is a of 3 is 5 right so we are at uh index number 3 here so we found another pair that sums out to be 9 but the node said that we only need to return or display that particular pair which says uh, like in which the j value the capital j value is greater right is the maximum so here the values are 2 and 3 and as uh, we need only need to print out one particular pair in which the j is maximum so we'll only print out one or four and that's why this condition is necessary that uh, the small r should be less than sorry should be greater than and equal to j for to change the value of i and j i hope you people got it i'm trying my best here i hope uh, was it clear aditya did you get it Yeah, uh, it is fine now. Uh, I guess they got it, and just to clear the board. I would say right now because it is very congested yeah, right now. Yeah, it is. So it yeah, is, 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 is. I'll clear the. So I guess the approach too is clear to everyone because uh, okay, and the complexity here would be n log n because uh, you are actually uh, taking one element yeah. and then searching the others using binary search, which gets log n, and you are doing this for n times in the worst case. so it gets uh, multiplied n times and you get uh, um you you get the complexity as uh, n log n so um see uh, the third approach now we can actually uh, uh, see the third approach is an efficient method that we can come up with uh, which is like uh, you have you have to take two pointers okay uh, first pointer would uh, point to the first element and the last and the second pointer would point to the last element now understand this very logically and uh, i would uh, go through this method very quickly because it is very easy to understand and uh, rather than explaining you theoretically i have already uh, listed or uh, mapped out things on the uh, whiteboard itself so yep see so i said the first element uh, would be uh, two here and these indexes are zero uh, one 2 3 and 4 and so on let's take k to be equal to uh 9 here so now uh what we are trying to do is uh we are uh we are taking two pointers and having i here and j over here we are going to check if a of i plus a of j is equal to the summation that is given so what have what will happen is now uh, for the first iteration it will check is 2 plus 9 equal to 9 so it is not it is equal to 11 but uh now we'll have to check a condition that it is if it is greater than that or is it less than that and it is not at all equal to that so yeah we'll have to check if it is less than that or greater than that now logically think about it that if it is greater than that we'll have to add two smaller elements so the the array is already in ascending order and we have a small element at i we know that so if the uh, summation is greater we'll have to decrement j so that it adds with a smaller number so that's how it will work now summation here was greater than uh, greater than 9 that is k so we will decrement it and j would come here for the next iteration that is j minus minus and uh, similarly if uh, if let's uh, assume that the summation was smaller then we'll have to increment i like if k would have been 13 
then imagine if we get 11 so 11 is less than 30 so uh, for 9 uh, so for 2 plus 9 it was 11 and if we now increment i will have a bigger number than uh, a of i here and we'll have to add with it so now 3 plus 9 becomes 12 and yet again it is not uh, equal to the k which would have been assumed so anyway uh, we have to check for these two conditions and we'll have to uh, increment or decrement j or i accordingly now this is this is very straight straightforward approach and these are called pointers which is another a concept like if you if you would have been uh, programming we would have uh, explained pointers but for now just imagine that there are these are two pointing to the elements and uh, that's how we are working and if if in the next iteration like just as i said j gets incremented and a of i plus a of j becomes equal to uh, 9 we have the condition that it is equal to k and we have found it now the note which Nishtha said that the note had given that if if you have more than two values which uh, give you the same summation uh, you uh, you have your i to be the maximum and j to be the least so this would uh, sorry i to be the least and uh, j to be the maximum one and now here we are uh, uh, starting with the least element itself like from the leftmost side then the first pair that you would get would already satisfy the condition so you won't have to even uh, take into consideration the uh, uh, the note which has been given so this way this becomes very easy and as you can see that we are taking two pointers and simultaneously they are uh, uh, going across uh, uh, like if if it's starting from here and it's starting from here that i would uh, and i would and j are both going and decrementing and incrementing together we don't need two for loops we just need one for loop so for that or, or even a while condition like while uh, i is less than j and uh, uh, and while k is not equal to the summation that we get so it would be very easy a basic condition that would be given and it would go n times like uh, because i and j would, would iterate over it so at least n that uh, the worst case would be n so yeah we got the most efficient algorithm here that um, uh, it was better than n square, it was better than n log n and now uh, we have the complexity as n. So that is order of n for you and uh, this is how you try different methods. This is how you uh, um, uh, go through different uh, iterations and try to uh, try to see which algorithm fits the best and, um, uh, and it always takes you lots of iterations and uh, practice to get to this like uh, you you if you know if you knew pointers you would have uh, thought about the approach first like the third approach first and not the first one because you know that it will take you n square of uh, n square of time complexity so that's about it yeah Nishtha. yeah uh, so basically like taking this question into consideration i would say that there was this particular note which was given right so you always need to take care that in in uh like in cooperative programming questions there would be this kind of things which would be mentioned in note and even in constraints so these would be the bounding conditions i would say that you need to uh, adhere to these particular uh conditions and to these particular notes otherwise you are well most like many of your test cases would be wrong so yeah so that's how you if you won't get like uh, the correct answer and you'll be frustrated why it's not coming so yeah pay attention to what the question actually says even the ascending uh, order was also mentioned if you wouldn't have read that correctly and if you wouldn't have paid attention to that particular word uh, again you wouldn't have come up come out to these you know these particular approaches the last two wouldn't have applied itself because you did not pay attention that this order yeah so basically the the point of taking one question and explaining you the process of it was to explain that how one should think and go around the problem like you have to try different approaches and how you approach a problem in general and also we'll have other sessions like we'll give you questions we'll have weekly weekly uh, questions weekly challenges uh, of that sort and then for their solution uh nishta here would guide you and we also have uh, satyam with us like he's the facilitator yes. for uh, competitive programming so shout out to Satya uh, he will be uh, with Nishta for solving your doubts we will be active on the spot as well um, uh, by the way I was going through the comments and uh, I see like uh, when you were explaining binary search I guess Mandar was trying to ask that uh, is dictionary similar to this approach so Mandar uh, dictionary is, is a data structure and uh, 
for different data structures you use different uh, of, uh like you, you you can use any a uh, sorting algorithm or a searching algorithm so for that you have to take into consideration that it is a data structure and not a method so yeah you can use binary search on dictionaries as well but then again you will have to check for conditions you'll have to check for the method so we will cover that like if we ever get a question on dictionary we will uh, try to uh, cover the dictionary data structure and i like how you thought about it mandar uh, uh, like if if you talk about binary search and your first uh, uh, go to point was dictionary so that you have understood the uh, things nishtha was telling you because uh, david malan by the way cs50 is a professor i always uh, say people who are new to programming go and watch that course so what he does is he whenever he explains binary search uh, he uh, gives an example of a uh, phone book directory and a dictionary so you can actually go through like go about binary search uh, searching that uh, if you want to uh, find a, na- a person named chira then you you will uh, actually see the first half of the book like like for the first half of the phone phone book like you will have to uh, you won't start from z right because you know that a b c would come in line so that is how you do that and uh, every time and he also says that every time you uh, go and uh, search for an element you start in the between uh, start in the middle because if, if for example you don't know that if you are not a human you are a computer you are going to the middle and then searching for it so that's how he explains it and that's how nishtha even explained it very very efficiently thanks nishtha for that uh yeah, yo satya is here in the comment section nice uh <coughs> anyway uh, yeah. <laughs> we yeah we will be having hackathons towards the end of the year and uh, your uh, if you practice cp you will have uh, um uh nish over others because your programs would run faster your programs would be efficient <laughs> your back end would be strong so uh that's how that's how it will help you and uh, also uh we are going to have many sessions so uh, stay tuned for that this was just a, a demo for you guys that uh, yeah nishtha can explain really well and uh, we can have sessions with you guys we are here to help you and just to give you a uh, give you a push to start competitive